Fall to Iwalia, my friends. Welcome back to Our Legends. In today's video, we're going to look at the story of Caragogunnel Castle and the Light of Death, which was lit by the Witch Grana that would lure unsuspecting travellers to very grim ends. But before we begin, if you could hit the like button and give us a subscribe, it would mean the absolute world to us and you'd be a legend. So, without any further delay, let's dive into today's story. About 8 kilometers southwest of Limerick City, located on top of a steep volcanic crag, lies the venerable fortress of Carrigagunnel, more anciently known as Carrignaquinnel, meaning the Rock of the Candle. This once formidable castle gains its name from the story of a witch Grana, who dwelt here and each night would light her candle, cursed with dark magic, to tempt passing travellers and lead them to a certain death. The legend is well told by Thomas Croft and Croker, in his 1826 book, Fairy Legends and Traditions of the South of Ireland. She was gigantic in size and frightful in appearance. Her eyebrows grew into each other with a grim curve and beneath their matted bristles deeply sunk in her head, two small grey eyes darted forth baneful looks of evil. From her deeply wrinkled forehead issued forth a hooked beak, dividing two shriveled cheeks. Her skinny lips curled with a cruel and malignant expression, and her prominent chin was studded with bunches of grisly hair. Death was her sport. Like the angler with his rod, the hag Grana would toil and watch, nor think it labour, so that the death of a victim rewarded her vigils. Every evening did she light an enchanted candle upon the rock, and whoever looked upon it died before the next morning's sun arose. Numberless were the victims over whom Grana rejoiced. One after the other had seen the light and their death was the consequence. Hence came the country around to be desolate and Carragogunnel, the rock of the candle, by its dreaded name. It was the mighty Finn himself who lifted up his voice and commanded the fatal candle of the hag Grana to be extinguished. He commanded one of his warriors, Rhaegon, Tyne Ragon, it be thy task, he said. And to him he gave a cap, thrice charmed by the magician, Luna of Lachlan. With the star of the same evening, the candle of death burned on the rock, and Ragon stood beneath it. Had he beheld the slightest glimmer of its blaze, he too would have perished, and the hag Grana, with the morning's dawn, would have rejoiced over his corpse. When Rhaegon looked towards the light, the charmed cap fell over his eyes and prevented his seeing. The rock was steep, but he climbed up its craggy side with such caution and dexterity that, before the hag was even aware, the warrior with averted head had seized the candle and flung it with a predacious force into the river Shannon, the hissing waters of which quenched the light forever. Then flew the charmed cap from the eyes of Rhaegon and he beheld the enraged hag with outstretched arms, prepared to seize him and whirl him after her candle. Rhaegon instantly bounded westward from the rock, just two miles, with a wild and wondrous spring. Grana looked for a moment at the leap, and then tearing up a huge fragment of the rock, flung it after Rhaegon with such tremendous force that her crooked hands trembled and her broad chest heaved with heavy puffs, like a smith's labouring bellows from the exertion. The ponderous stone fell harmless to the ground, for the leap of Rhaegon far exceeded the strength of the furious hag. The hag was never heard of again, but the stone remains, and deeply imprinted in it is still to be seen the mark of the hag's fingers. That stone is far taller than the tallest man, and the power of forty men would fail to move it from the spot where it fell. The grass may wither around it, the spade and plough destroy dull heaps of earth. The walls of castles fall and perish. But the clock Ragon is a monument fitting to preserve the memory of the deed. The stone named Clock Ragon, meaning the Stone of Ragon, is shown on 19th century maps about a kilometre southwest of Carrigogunnel Castle. A house was built beside it and it now lies in the front garden of this house. Now we'll take a look at the history of the castle that occupies the rock. Carragogunnel was granted to Duncad O'Brien by King John in about 1209. The first defensive structure, a preceptory, 
was built on the rock probably from timber and earth and was garrisoned by the Knights Templar, the most skilled fighters of the time. Targogunnel remained in the hands of the O'Briens until 1536, with a strong stone keep on the north corner of the castle built in the middle of the 15th century by Brian Duff O'Brien. On the 22nd of August 1536, Lord Leonard Grey, Deputy of Ireland, marched on Carrigogunnel after several altercations with its then Lord, Mahan O'Brien. Grey ordered the castle garrison to surrender. When they refused, he turned his cannon on the castle's gatehouse and blew up the entrance, gaining access to the lower court. A messenger boy was sent to the castle offering the men their lives if they surrendered, but the poor boy was pulled into the castle and then thrown from the top of the battlements. Grey wasted no time bringing in several more cannons and taking aim at the castle keep. At dawn the following morning, the castle garrison, seeing their position as hopeless, surrendered to Grey's army. Grey showed no mercy and 46 men inside the castle were tried and gruesomely executed. Their screaming ghosts are said to haunt the castle to this day. The O'Briens later regained the castle and in 1584 formally surrendered their lands to Queen Elizabeth. In return for their allegiance to the English crown, they were regranted the castle, complete with the barony of Pubblebrain. Donna O'Brien supported the Confederates in the opposition to Cromwell but perhaps taking account of the events of 1536, when the entire garrison was executed, he quickly surrendered the castle to Cromwell's forces in 1651. In 1691, during the second siege of Limerick, the castle was garrisoned by a Jacobite army of 150 men. The Williamite general Gordon de Gickle sent four guns and a small army under the command of Lieutenant General Scavenmore to take the castle. The men inside the castle again promptly surrendered and were taken as prisoners of war. In September 1691, to prevent further use, the Williamite force loaded the castle with no fewer than 84 barrels of gunpowder and blew it up. A later story tells of a small dungeon-like cell that can still be seen in one of the western rooms of the castle ruin. This is reputed to be an obelisk down which prisoners would be thrown and forgotten about. In the latter part of the 18th century, this cell was used by the father of a young lady to lock up his daughter in an attempt to prevent her marriage to a man of whom her parents strongly disapproved. Sadly, a few days later, the heartbroken girl was found dead in the cell. She was buried under a great ash tree that was in the centre of the ivy-covered room. For years afterwards, her ghost was often seen on that spot, after nightfall, pining and wailing for her lost lover. So that is the story of Carrigogunnel Castle and the Witch Grana, along with some other history about the castle. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let us know down below in the comments what you thought. And as always, this is Jay from Our Legends. Good night and good luck.